Raphael, and I'm a seventh grader at Roswell. And this is my finals project for this trimester, my science class. And I'm going to be giving a presentation about gravity. So we're going to start off with an experiment. And I have a golf ball and a marble. And I'm going to ask the three volunteers on who do you think, what do you think is going to fall first? Yes. land at the same time for a very interesting reason because everything at Earth falls on a common rate. The common rate that everything falls on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared or meters per second per second unless there is another applied force and I'll get into that later. But on the moon an object falls at 1.68 meters per second squared because there is less gravity because the moon is smaller and the larger an object is, the stronger the gravitational pull is. And also, the closer you are to the object, the stronger the pull is. Acceleration is the, which, the rate at which the velocity or speed of an object changes. Velocity is speed, but has a direction. So in order to use velocity, you have to say, let's say, five miles per hour, you have to sink south or north in order for it to be a velocity. It is measured in meters per second per second or meters per second squared. Because when you do the equation, the seconds don't cancel each other out the way the equation is positioned in order to find the acceleration, speed, or mass of the object. And once an object has stopped accelerating, it's reached terminal velocity. Friction. There are four different types of friction. Static, fluid, rolling, and sliding friction. An example of sliding friction would be this. There is friction between my hands, and that's an example of why my hands would heat up. And this marble, it would roll across the table, and even though you think it's moving smooth, it's still having friction, because the surface isn't completely smooth. Friction is a force that can slow things down. So that is a reason why something would fall slower than another object because of friction, maybe friction with the air. And if there was no friction, an object would either spin or slide or roll forever. Static rolling and sliding friction are all frictions that have to do with solid objects, like your hands are solid, or when you scrape your foot across the carpet, that's two solid objects. But fluid friction is between gases and liquids. So water, when you push something on the water, it doesn't go forever because there's friction with the water. Air resistance. Air resistance slow things down based on their size and shape. So if you had, let's say, a long, long, skinny object, and it was made of the same material, but then you had a square object, and there was the same amount of fabric used, the square object would fall slower because of the shape. And a larger object will fall slower because it traps more air inside. But once it gets big enough, it will fall faster. So there's a right balance in the science of, let's say, parachutes. If there's no air resistance, it means you're either in a vacuum or a black hole. But a black hole, you cannot feel the air resistance because the gravity is too strong and you can't feel it because you're crushed in that strong gravity. Here we have a picture of an apple and then a bucket of apples. Apple has less mass, and that's kind of the size of object, but it's kind of not. So the object is being pulled to the center of the earth less than the bucket of apples is, because the bucket of apples has a larger mass. But the bucket of apples is also larger, so it has more air resistance because it catches more air under. So what ends up happening is all of these end up canceling each other out because there's one air resistance for each gravitational pull, and that's not necessarily how much it would weigh. It wouldn't work weigh three arrows, but that's the visual version of that. And then the apples would cancel each other out, so they would end up falling at the same rate. Here we have a picture of a crumpled piece of paper and then a flat piece of paper. The 
crumbled piece of paper and the flat piece of paper both have the same mass. So they're being pulled at the same rate towards the center of the Earth because they're the same piece of paper. They're not the same piece of paper, but they have the same dimensions and it's made of the same material. But the flat pieces of paper's shape is spread out more directly and it'll catch air under it. So when you drop the two objects, the piece of paper that was not comfortable takes slower because it has more air resistance. So those end up catching each other out, and then those end up canceling each other out. But you have two air resistance left. So that means that the paper would have more left and it would fall slower. That's why parachutes work on human beings. Because when you just fall, you're falling at 9.8 meters per second squared. But when you would stop. But you're falling at 9.8 meters per second squared. And then when you add a parachute, you're adding very little mass to you, or you're adding a lot of surface area. And air gets trapped in the parachute, and then it pushes it out. But it's slowing you down because you're adding less mass. So you're adding, in this version, this visual version that I created, you would add more arrows to the amount of, or more white arrows to the amount of black arrows. So that they end up canceling each other out and you would fall slower because you have more areas. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Any questions or comments, boys and girls? So actually, a penny and a human, they don't have a lot of air resistance. They would fall at the same rate because the example I just showed you, one is smaller, but the mass is larger, but you have more air resistance because your body is larger. So if you have a golf ball on a penny or a bowling ball on a penny, they still have fall at the same rate. Yes. Yeah. How does the equation work for every let's say, pound of mass you have, if you add on a bit more gravitational pull that is pulling you towards the Earth. But then, when you add a pound to your body, you're also getting larger, and that adds a certain amount of air resistance to your body. And that always equals 9.8 meters per second. Yes, yeah. Is it a penny in the pull pull? Yes, they would, because one's mass is larger, but one's less is less, so since the mass is less, it takes up less. All right, thank you.